talk about vacuum tube amplifiers and why it's important to bias your tube amplifiers on a regular basis. Unlike solid state devices, vacuum tubes do age and as they age the emission will change on them and it will cause your bias to go out. Now let's first explain what bias is. In a class AB amplifier you don't, do not want your output devices going into cutoff. Um, essentially, and this, this applies to both solid state and vacuum tube devices, but solid state devices typically once they're biased, until something blows up on them, the bias doesn't change. But that's not true with vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes are devices that do age, and as they age, they will uh, go out of alignment as the tubes age. So basically what bias is, to simplify things to the non-technical minded, your tube or transistor is biased to just before cutoff. The reason that you do this is because you're using two tubes or two transistors, one to amplify the, the positive portion of your waveform as the signal is rising up, and then the other amplifier is the negative portion of the waveform. This is called a class B. Uh, a class B amplifier is not very clean because at that point if you go into full cutoff there's what is known as switching distortion. Switching distortion is what made the original class B amplifier sound so harsh. The original class B both vacuum tube and uh, solid state devices had a tendency to sound hoarse. They had a harsh. They had a lot of uh, odd order harmonic distortion which really didn't uh, make the sound quality that good. So enter the Class AB amplifier. The Class AB amplifier keeps a little bit of bias on each of your outputs so that the output doesn't completely cut off. So how exactly do we bias our amplifier? Again, speaking in non-technical terms, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a slight voltage to the grid. In the case of a solid state amplifier or amplifier, you're supplying a slight voltage to the base of the transistor to keep your transistor or tube in a slight amount of conduction. If you've got too low a bias, your tube will go into full cutoff and you'll have distortion. If you've got too much bias, your tube's going to draw excessive current and that's going to shorten the life of the tubes and it's also going to possibly overheat your uh, expensive output transformers. So on a tube amp running EL34s, which is what I'm running, you want your bias voltage to be between about uh, 0.35 and 0.4 volts. As you can see, if we look at the, the voltmeter here, I'm running 0.339. So my bias has gone down just a little bit in the last year since I biased this amplifier last. I have four bias controls, one for each tube. There are four outputs. So we're just going to put the bias adjustment in. Now we, on a tube amp you want to have it warming up for a good hour before you do this. And we're going to shoot for between 0.35 and 0.4 volts. That's for this one tube. Now I'm going to move over to the next tube. So I move to the next test point and I find that my bias is a little low. Now it says negative just because I've got my probes reversed. It doesn't matter. I'm now going to bias the second tube. So I just have to find my adjustment here get the adjustment tool into the, the pot. There we go. Even though the bias voltage should be set for between 0.35 and 0.4 volts, I'm going to try and shoot for 0.36 for all four tubes. There we go, same as the other side. Now we'll move our test probes over and we'll go to the right channel. Nice thing about these, this is a Yaquin amp that I'm using, it's a Chinese made one. I do have a Macintosh, I'm going to be doing a service video on that one, I overhaul it at some point. But uh, right now I'm using this as my studio amp. Again, well this one's not too bad, these, these tubes are actually newer. I had to replace this pair of tubes about a year ago, these other ones here are about four years old. So this one's actually within spec. So now we've got our bias voltage for the third tube. We'll just do the final tube. And this one, this one was a little low. So, and this will happen as the tubes age. So we're just going to go back up to There 
there we go. There's our three points, uh, a point three six volts for our bias. Now our amplifier is biased again, and I'm good, you know, for probably for another year or so. And I like to check the bias on it every year, just because tubes do age, and if you want to extend the life of your tubes, you want to keep your amplifier biased uh, as close as you can to what the manufacturer uh, calls for them. And, and it, that bias voltage will vary uh, by the brand and by the type of tubes that are used. But for the EL34s, typically uh, 0.35 to 0.4 volts is considered sufficient bias. What it does is that keeps the tubes warm and it keeps them running at a state where there's a little bit of current, a little bit of voltage between the cathode and your ground you've got a 10 ohm cathode resistor and this is allowing about 0.35 volt across that 10 ohm resistor so we've got a little bit of current flowing through the tubes uh, that's just to keep the tubes from going into cutoff and uh, it keeps our sound clean so that's how you bias your tube amp if you've got a tube amp again you should be doing this every year uh, or more depending on how much you use the thing and definitely if you roll your tubes or replace your tubes you're going to want to do your, your uh, bias again. Uh, there's typically not a bias adjustment on the preamp tubes uh, they typically don't need to be biased it's just your output tubes that uh, need to be biased and uh, there you go that's how you maintain your tube amps. We'll catch you in our next video.